Alright, what's up guys and welcome to another video from me, the Skyrendrew. And today is a very very special day because this is our first TBU pre-planning against actually a very good friend of mine and a very, very good Wagner battler, the Bristol Beetle or Ashton AK or even known as Eric in real life. I'm just saying. Uh, so anyway, Eric is a very very tremendous dangerous battler and I must say, his um, his page looks a lot better than mine. I, I need to fix that. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I'll, I'll get around that someday. This looks terrible. Uh, anyway, uh, looking to my opponent here. He has Conkler, Milolic, Rotom Heat, Torpedo, Rhyperior, Togetic, Yarashi, Hedron, Tangrof, and Megalodios for his startup points. And of course, he has a Nido King, which he actually has been switched out from the bench for Rotom Heat. So, yeah. He's kind of dangerous. Uh, he doesn't really have a fast team. Like, his fastest Pokemon is his Mega Pokemon. Outside of that, he has a really, really slow team. Though, he has some things that, you know, could work for momentum. But as the time goes on here, we are definitely having a good chance against this team. Though, the bulk will force me to play much more aggressive, which is something I'm not necessarily looking forward to. And, um... I don't really know how I want to play around that. Uh, though my team here is the ones that I have active is Thunderous, Landers, Alakasam, Shaman, Kubalion, Drapion, Gengar, Empoleon, Kyurib, and Mega Dian Chi. And um, I was throwing a few ideas back and forth with Ellis because I do recognize that there is not a whole lot I can do uh, that's gonna be helpful throughout this match. And I knew that going in that that's gonna be. Annoying. Uh, it, it's definitely gonna be annoying to be trying to, you know, defeat this opponent. But then he is a powerful battler. I recognize that. And um, the things I was throwing around was that Thunder's Eye, while it does outspeed his whole team, it's actually just that. Uh, it's very likely that he's gonna have Scarfers, and I'm not a big fan of having Thunder's Scarf, to be honest. And um, while aspects, um, um, what do you call it, um, specs Volt Switch would be really nice, he still got Rhyperior. Rhyperior is generally annoying due to that, so I can't play around that Pokemon. But outside of that, that would have been so nice. But uh, that also would kind of be very, very destructive for, of course, uh, um, the Pokemon itself, Thunderous, so kind of avoiding that while I want to use it, I don't see the point of it. Lenders, though, definitely important. I was debating getting a Scarf 1. Uh, Scarf 1 outspeed the whole team, but he still got Tangrowth. And the thing with Tangrowth is that he can soak that and get Regenerator going. That's like a never-ending cycle, and I don't have too many plays that could kill that Pokemon off. So I'm better off actually winning the matchup with Landers, so that's something I need to figure out. Like I said, very, very given, uh, extremely fast. While a lot of his Pokemon can have access to Sucker Punch, which is something I need to keep in mind, um, most likely, of course, his uh, Forsaken Beast that is Nil King. Um, I really don't see a point of having a life for anything like that. If he scarfs, it's going to be super strange for him to have a Sucker Punch on it. But that's really the only Pokemon I see uh, having that. So I'm not too scared. Uh, I do have a genuine respect. But I'm not scared. I I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for that. And uh, I really need to scout out you know, his moveset. I'm really hoping that he is a um, scarf set. Uh, if he has life orb set, then that's going to be tougher to deal with, but at least I know that Landorus wins that matchup. Landorus actually wins a whole lot of matchups as long as they aren't Scarf. His Hirachi is going to be generally a problem for me. And that's actually something I didn't take account for when I was building his team. Uh, the other idea I had was, you know, Cobalion being banded, but Cobalion just doesn't, doesn't cut it this game. It's too fragile for his own good against these matchups. Cabalion needs momentum. If he can't get it, then it isn't worth having. Drapion, superb this game. Uh, I don't really care what my opponent does. He's gonna have issues against Drapion, and I'm gonna love every second of it. Gengar, kinda good. Kinda good. Like, it, it can work, 
I'm not saying it will, but it definitely has a purpose, which makes me, yeah, it's making me, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm a bit undecisive, I really want to go with a scarf Gengar, um, if it's your Arceus scarf, then that gonna get the whoop ass, if anything, uh, but like I said, I'm pretty much undecisive at this point, though it would help immensely. It really, really would. Empoleon is a Pokemon I don't feel are that important, uh, but luckily though, uh, my co-coach Ellis did see a purpose for it, and we're gonna go through that just very, very close, or very, very soon. Uh, cure him? No. Like due to Hiroshi, he said no. Um, we can't risk that. We can't. While I was on benching on actually scarfing Curem, I still can't risk it. I just I can't. I can't do it. Uh, Curem is out indefinitely on in this game. Mega Dianchi though, pretty darn sweet this game. It can hit everything super effectively uh, outside of Tangrove, which most likely will be a soul vested anyway. So. I was thinking Calm Mind Protect, uh, Earth Power, and uh, Moon Blast. But um, Ellis thought something different. So we had kind of the same idea. I was a bit on edge on using Gengar and Thunderous. Was undecisive. I, did, I forgot to mention Shaman. Shaman is a given this match, no matter what. Uh, so anyway, we're going to look what um, Ellis did wrote. Now, Ellis, uh, if you guys aren't knowing him, he is the person I ask for when it comes to, you know, finding out what I need to do to break something apart to make this team work. He is a very risky guy. He's a very aggressive player. And I can't stress this enough. He always have a smart idea on how he could help me. And this is the sets I got. Um, while I'm using them or not will be seen in the valley itself. Though do, do keep in mind that most of these sets are spot on and I'll consider them very very highly if anything so the first thing he did for me is the uh, he gave me what I needed when it came come to speed that I don't necessarily need to outspeed uh, Latias uh, Mega Latias is a threat definitely but not that big of a threat so I can utilize more of my defensive capabilities in HP instead of trying to go for a potential speed tie and of course this speed uh, investment let me outspeed uh, an uninvested Malodic um, a non-scarfed um, uh, actually speed Milotic that was a weird one, I thought, I think it means Latias uh, anyway, and Scarf Yerashi of course and combination of Earth Power and Moon Blast hits everything at least neutral Rock Polish is to prevent Nidoking King Yerashi and Heatran from shaking this mon uh, if they are in range of, and if they are in range in Earth Power I can potentially sweep uh, also, Rock Polish is against Sharpedo, um, preferably. So if I kill something like, um, if I, for example, kill Cobalion, um, not Conqueror, kill Cobalion, Conqueror, uh, and he's switching to Sharpedo, I know he's going to protect against me, which also means that I have the chance of setting up Rock Polish. And I should, due to that, if I get that momentum with the NG, I should hopefully be late game so I can actually sweep from that point. That's the point. Uh, Alakazam. Now, this set of moves is not decided just yet, though they are worth keeping in mind. Uh, so enough speed to outspeed Mega Latias, which obviously is the only Pokemon that is fast. But Alakazam is faster. I don't need too much speed here to actually win. The combination of Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, it's everything, at least neutral damage, gets super effective damage on 7 out of 10 mons. Uh, Life Orb instead of Focus Sash to capitalize on, of course, the Alakazam just hurts. Um, well, I guess the biggest issue is, of course, if he uses Sharpedo in this kind of uh, environment. If anything, um, a possible choice scarf user allowing to wall break since it will let <laughs> a lot more chaos. Yeah, if it hasn't a scarf, right, and then he shouldn't be able to stop this Pokemon. That's like the worst part. And basically, only protect Sharpedo is the thing that makes him outspeed this. And Call Mine, basically, for guaranteeing this sweep of potential of this mon. Um, he preferred Psy Shock over Psychic. I'll see if I do that. Shadow Ball is a given, though, because Shadow Ball hurts Hiroshi so much. And uh, that's only if it's special defensive. 
if it isn't special defensive, is it is a sweeper set, uh, um, then hopefully I can actually take it out as a one call mind. Um, next one here was Shaman. This is a set I definitely will be using. Uh, enough speed to outspeed everything outside of a non scarf Nidor King. Uh, or it will outspeed a non scarf Nidor King, my bad. Which means if it has a life orb set of Nidor King, this won't pose a threat to me in that fashion. Enough speed investment to avoid a tweet kill from an adamant life orb ice fang torpedo. Now, that's the situation we could be looking at if I actually if i make a wrong call against a sharpedo uh with remaining investment in special attack you will be able to two hit kill conkledor if you lease if you have at least 20 percent prior damage on it then you would get special fence drop and you will <laughs> you will kill it on the first flare blitz or seed flare uh, and toxic for megalodias and tangrove um i said it all wrong sorry uh with remaining investment in special attack you will be able to two hit kill Conkluder, if you have at least 20% prior damage on it and you get a special defense drop on your first seat flare on it. Alright, that is a 2 hit kill range. Fair enough. Um, not the, the matchup I'm going for though, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Landris, Power Herb. This is a funny set though. I'm still debating if I use it, but if I'm using it, it's going to be used just because of this fashion. It's so... It's kind of smart. I, I can't deny that fact. Uh, enough speed for landers to outspeed a scarfed, non scarfed Nidor King. Power Herb Fly uh, to Lauren Tangrove, which she, he will definitely bring in, and he will SD on me, or he will definitely switch in that on me, which gives my chance to go for a Sword Stance and then go for a Fly to just Tangrove will just die from that hit. Um, Mega Lodios and Togetic is Pokemon that can't be used, but. Uh, I mean, Aladius is definitely a Pokemon that's going to be able to outspeed, uh, of course, no matter what, really. And Togetic is um, not a problem. It really is. If it decides to bring it, then I have the responses for it. And honestly, it's it's not going to be utilized. It's just that it, it, it won't. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the deal here. That's pretty much what we were going to go with. And... Um, if I go with this set, which I've seen very likely, it's going to be just for a reason of actually beating uh, Tangrove, because he's going to bring it. I I can't really stress this enough. Due to Tangrove, I can't have a Scarf set Landers. It's that simple. I need to beat it from from the first matchup. I just I can't do anything else about it. Um, now, here's Drapion, and this is a set I definitely like, and uh, it's very likely I'm going to use this set too. It is enough speed, to actually have speed on non scarf Nidor King. That's important because Nidor King has Sucker Punch after all. And if he has Earth Power, we can still cope. Like, Grapion just solved so many things. Uh, the combination of Knockoff, Poison Jab, Oakle Tail hits everything at least neutral. Gets super effective damage on 7 out of 10 months. That's important. And that's something I did consider together with Sword Stance, but I didn't go for Shukaberry. Now, that's something I definitely will go for, because Shukaberry actually solved the biggest issues, and that is actually Rhyperior. If he has a Rhyperior that is a Rock Polish set, then it's still not game over. I can still bring Drapion and take that out with Aqua Tail. I should not be KO'd by an Earthquake, which is really, really important. And of course, if it's Scarfed, Nidoking, King, then I shouldn't really care for the Earth Power. And Timid Life Orb, if I get hit by it, it won't kill me, though it's not the most preferable switching, if anything. Uh, now, last Pokemon. And last Pokemon my, my guy Ellis wanted me to bring was Empoleon. And I like this set for many reasons. Um, it is just, it's, it's a weird set. It is a set that could actually pull a late game sweep. And uh, I really like that idea that we actually can pull that off. Whew. It actually is a sword and set with Torrent on um, Embolion, which you can bury also to not be that whittled down by um, by earth hits or earth earthquakes, ground hits. Damn. Uh, so enough speed investment to prevent being speed creep by Conkleder. That's important. Uh, Defense is guaranteed to live an adamant dream punch. That's important. Um, even after Stealth Rose, I won't die actually by it. Um, if Conqueror switches into Empoleon on the Sword Sands, a combination of a Drill Run or Drill Pack and Aqua Jet will kill it. 
you could run knockoff, though I won't, because the drill pack or is just so much smarter um, against it. Now, he has a few notes, and this one I'll definitely keep in mind. Uh, you should keep him pulling healthy until your rush is dead, unless it reveals to be a non-scarce one. Yeah, that's important. Uh, if it's a non-scarce one, then I have other responses for it. Uh, you should keep Shaven healthy until Sharpedo is dead. Um, there is not a whole lot of Pokemon that can actually deal with my Shaman efficiently, so that's a good thing. I should keep Drapion healthy until Megalodius is dead. Megalodius can hurt it quite hard, and being able to switch in and out of it is something I need to keep in mind. So those are really, really useful notes. And as you guys see, Ellis, my co-coach, is... He just finds a way. Like I said, I struggle a bit here with the things I wanted to create. I think he solved those issues, and most of these sets are going to be used, or at least be considered going into these battles. And the notes here are very, very prominent. They are important. Um, they are for me to basically don't do the switching. Um, it's one of those weird things that, you know, you get stress play. So when I do play TBU matches, I tend to have a block of things that I shouldn't do. <laughs> and they are awesome because that keeps me afloat, it keeps me bay, it keeps me doing the right moves and not overpredict, not overshot a thing, being safe and trying to be as predictable as I need to be if I can if I am predictable then I'm forcing my opponent to behave in a fashion I want them to be. I don't have to do the risky plays until much much later in the game when they are important to make, when I have to make those calls. Um we'll see if that happens. But I like I said, their Ellis is kind of spot on here, and uh, I am a bit undecisive, but four of his six sets are going to be used this match, and very likely that I'll consider all of them. We did throw a few ideas between one another. Uh, he has a point with his team, though, because a lot of these Pokemon can set up, and the importance of they being able to set up is not that I was supposed to be able to sweep him, it is that my opponents have tanks as Pokemon that actually can sustain damage, I want to break through these, and the only way I'm going to pull that off is by actually setting up against them. So, setup mons was, was actually the idea I had in mind, but I think just that Ellis just brings that little extra, definitely with Empoleon. This, that set I do like. Uh, Drapion is going to be important. And like I said, it's going to be, I can't really deal with Latias uh, in that fashion. Though Knockoff will hurt it, um, Latias will take out Drapion with a uh, special, with a Draco hit. It's it's unavoidable. It's not a situation I want to stay into. Uh, so I need to get out of there. Uh, and obviously the response there is Dianchi because he can't go for stab moves against me. Or he could go for a psychic. But um, if he goes for a psychic, then let's face it, I'm immune to it. So he, he needs to go for Draco. So that's something I could definitely utilize. And we'll basically see what happens. I'm definitely looking forward to this match. Eric is a good player, like I said there. And I've been talking way, way too long. That's 18 minutes. Damn. Uh, if you guys stay this long, wow, thanks for that. And um, basically, this is going up on Thursday, I believe. So on Friday is the result, and I can't tell you guys anything until then. So, yeah. That was very anticlimactic. I really want to thank you guys for watching. Um, really excited about this game, and we'll see how this goes. So, with all this money, well, thank you for watching, of course. And remember, the sky is the limit. And I'll see you in the next TBU video. Until then, take care. Bye.